So I'm just going to hand it over to you. Okay. <laughs> um, it sort of started um, unexpectedly for me about mid-March. Um, I went to get some blood tests done and found out that my I had diabetes, um, which wasn't a shock to me because it runs in the family. And in reflection, I have sort of been battling a lot of health things and I, I think they all sort of mesh together over time and had been so much part of my life that it didn't, I didn't recognize them as individual symptoms of diabetes. I just had accepted that this was how my body was and I was struggling and I had been trying to get help from doctors and being dismissed time and time again. So it kind of, kind of given up on sort of feeling my best self and just like, this is how it is. And so we're just going to make the best of what we have and plow forward and, Um, so when I got the blood test, I was like, well, that makes a lot of sense. Um, now I can finally get some things sorted out and move forward and, you know, I have an answer. Um, the doctors wanted to put me on metformin right away. And I was like hesitant. And I said, no, I want to do some research. Um, I have this thing where I really, really, really struggle being told what to do. Um, and so Ooh, I have no idea about that one. No, <laughs> <laughs> it is, uh, yeah, it's like a big factor in many things in my life. And so mm-hmm. I knew from family members what a diabetes, typical diabetes diet was like. And I know what that like low carb counting calories, watching every mouthful that you eat and that terrified me Mm -hmm. and I did not want to have to live a life where I was having to be so very 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 careful about food that I'd be eating um and given my relationship with food and body image was like it definitely was something I didn't want to to go on um and then with my research I just sort of stumbled upon um Dr. Neil Bernard's um research and studies in his book about reversing diabetes and I was like what like it's it's reversible why is this not discussed in the medical field why do doctors not tell you there is a way to reverse diabetes why is it like you've got diabetes now go on a low-carb diet and medication and you're good so I read and I researched and I researched and I was like this is not some quack doctor making up this like fad diet Mm -hmm. that is currently really really hip you know everybody's doing plant-based now and I thought okay well I'm gonna I'm gonna try it I'm gonna jump in 100% this is how I do things told my partner okay it's reversible I've done the research we're going vegan (laughs) I do most of the cooking in the house so it was Mm -hmm. like this is what I'm going to be cooking. If you don't, if you're not on board, that's totally fine, but you'll be cooking for yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, Love it. (laughs) She's amazing. She's super supportive and was like, I'm going to do whatever you need me to do. And like, you say the word and I'm there. And so just sort of started a little bit here and there. And then I was, oh, I can't remember where I heard about clean food, dirty girl, but it came up on a Facebook, a different Facebook group. And I was like, what is this? Uh, it sounds, it sounds fun. It sounds different. I like, does it have like recipes? Like, is it like a subscription? I wasn't really sure. So I did some research and I sort of like played around in the Facebook group and did some searching and looked at your blogs and stuff like that. And I was like, Oh, I like, I want to, I'm going to try a re- like a recipe, yeah. just like one recipe. <laughs> and baby I'm steps, like, baby steps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think it was like a dressing or something I tried because I, and I put it on and I was like, this is amazing. Like, it's going to make my life so much easier. I don't have to worry about oil. I don't, I can make substitutes easily and it's, I have the full control plus a community like this is, um, unheard of and and I noticed you know there's a lot of people of color and there's a queer community within the community Mm and I really sort of I felt like this was my place and my home and I could be who I needed to be and I could ask questions and ask questions that maybe had been asked a million times and people were going to politely be like well here's an answer but also search (laughs) search for the (laughs) search for your answer um so yeah and so within four months um, I was a hundred percent whole food plant based. Um, I'm not super, super strict. Um, I don't eat any meat or dairy ever. Like that's not something I'm ever going to go back on, mm-hmm. but, uh, like sometimes I might, I might sort of, you know, eat 
a little bit more sugar than maybe that I, or a little bit of oil in a, in a meal if somebody has cooked me something or mm-hmm. we go out to eat. So I'm not super, super strict on myself because I know myself and I know I need to give myself some freedom within those limits and, or else I'm going to rebel because <laughs> yeah. that's what I, how I self-sabotage. It's like, I, if I still feel restricted, I'm going to, I know I'm going to rebel. And um, so, yeah, it's just, you know, and I've, just got uh, at the end of July. I got my results from A one C, and I'm right at the right at the line of normal now. So I'm down to five point nine. So seems like I've somewhat reversed the diabetes. The endocrinologist yeah. would like me to go down a little bit more, but I mean, yeah, just yeah. And you've been doing this since March. Yeah, and now since it's March. It, and it's August now so when we're talking. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's yeah, incredible. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Incredible. Just, I love it. It's unbelievable. It's been like life changing for me. It sounds so cliche that like I could have switched my diet and yeah. I have essentially transformed my life. Like my, my being, my, my way of thinking, my perspective, my motivation, my energy levels mm-hmm. have been like off the roof like usually I would come home from work I work long long days I work in um, early childhood education um which is exhausting and so I'd come home and I'd just be like I just lie on the couch I have no time for anything I don't want to talk to anybody I don't want to like reach out to friends or even my partner like I don't have energy for anything Mm -hmm. to now coming home being like I'm going to go for a run and I'm gonna put dinner on and I'm like I'm gonna have a conversation and call my friends it's like what is this life (laughs) <laughs> what is this life? Yeah, yeah, that was like, and the craziest part is like that was available to you. Like yeah. this whole time, it, it was available to you. That's what gets me. I'm like, there's, there's this life that we don't even like a lot. Like most people, which is why I do what I do, but they don't know that it's possible. But it's like already there. You just have to uncover it by like eating the foods that are going to support yeah. you. Right? It's so crazy. And it's, it's such so a crazy. simple, a simple answer to you know simple solution but I like it for me at least you know I've had years and years and years of uh, trauma with food and my relationship with food has always been one of shame and guilt and hiding it because I know from as far back as I can remember like as far back as age seven being called out by family members and being called fat and ugly and um it, 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 you know, you internalize that. And, and my family, I mean, my, like my parents, they had a catering company. They love food. They're from Malaysia. Like food is yeah. everything. Yeah. Um, but like other members of the family, even my, my parents to a certain degree didn't realize the harm that they were doing with some of the language that they used when I was younger. Um, so anytime anybody would ever say anything like, oh, like you should try, you know, Weight Watchers or you should, I was like, shut it down. Like, no, like I don't. I don't have the capacity to change the way I eat because I'm so filled with shame and guilt. Mm. And I don't know what is Mm. like, what is healthy food? Chicken breast with no dressing on it. Like, I don't, I don't know. Um, And so it's, it was just crazy to me that I would have jumped into this new way of eating. And within 48 hours, I was like, I have energy. Yeah. Wow. That just gave me chills. (laughs) Yeah. 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 And it's like, when you said that, like you could, you didn't have the capacity to change how you eat because you were so filled with shame and guilt. Like that is so powerful. And I think that so many people can relate to that. So I'm just kind of curious, like, has this way of eating, do you feel for you, has it given you some kind of like freedom around food and like I wanted I want to hear about like the emotional component with this way of eating because as we know like the the physical aspects of eating this way right like we know that it that it's I mean for you clearly you've gotten like results from that just with your A1C numbers but can you talk a little bit about like the emotional component with food and eating and this way of eating yeah I think It's interesting. I would have thought it would have been a lot harder for me to manage to like stick it out for this long because anything I've tried Mm -hmm. in the past has like been very, very a short time, like a short window of success. And there has been like either Mm self-sabotage or um, I've become physically ill and not being able to continue or fall off the wagon and it's really really hard to get back up but this way I think 
because the physical part was so easy and I had so much support from my partner that it was that it the emotional part seemed man, more manageable um so I was able to stick with it and my thing was mm. I want to stay ho- I want to stay off the dairy and the meat mm. that was my only goal was I want to stay off the dairy and meat and if I have an extra bit of avocado or the nuts yeah. and I have those fats and I love peanut butter and I have a bagel with peanut butter for breakfast that's totally fine that's a choice I've made and that's okay and I'm going to be okay with that yeah. if I don't eat all of the fruits and vegetables that I'm supposed to have in a day mm. that's okay because mm. you'll only eat fruits and vegetables <laughs> so you've had you've had your share it, yeah. I could, probably could have had more but I if I didn't, I didn't. If we wanted to eat out, I wasn't going to deprive myself and say, no, I can't go to that restaurant mm-hmm. because I'm vegan or I'm trying really, really hard to keep my numbers low. It was more a case of, well, mostly we've been going to vegan restaurants, but if it was, and I was like, I just need to know ahead of time because I want to look at the menu and see yeah. what the best choice is for me. And if there's a plant-based choice, then I'm going to go for that. Um, even like, and most of my friends or whatever have been really supportive. They've been like, yeah, we can, you know, make sure this place has it, or I'm going to cook you a salad and, and, you know, we won't put this in it. And I'm like, just do what you need to do. Like, don't make anything special for me, but it's been nice to have that support. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've had like some moments where I've really missed certain way patterns of my life. It's mm-hmm. not that I miss the food because I've learned that I can substitute those foods really easily. Mm. And a plant-based diet, at least in Vancouver, BC, is super hip right now. So everybody is knows about like whole food plant-based and like there's lots of restaurants, lots of grocery stores. Mm. Um, so I can substitute easily. But I think what I miss sometimes is that pattern, that emotional mm ease of doing something like sometimes it's just easier to eat this way because it doesn't require any thought it doesn't require any exertion of my emotions or like my anxiety doesn't have to be peaked in any way it's just like a flat line and so sometimes I crave that Mm. comfort of Mm. doing what's I'm used to doing yeah. or my old way of doing things where it feels like it was easier, but I know it wasn't logically. I know it wasn't easier, but it yeah. felt easier. Um, and so that has been a bit of a challenge for me. I know like the last two weeks or so, I've sort of been a little bit on the lower energy side. Um, and I know that that's the thought process that's coming in is like, Oh, but mm. it's so much easier. If you just mm. remember when you just cooked, <laughs> like, this and then you were good for the week as opposed to really you're going to spend four hours in the kitchen on Monday and you're going to do a batch of this this and this and you have to choose what meals you're going to make and you have to make a grocery list and then it's really really hard to find that one ingredient and then you're going to have to go to the other grocery store and (laughs) know that that's my my anxiety is creeping in and I'm like I have to check it even if I don't check it that's when I'm going to fall off the wagon yeah that's so powerful oh so many things you said they're just hitting hitting home I think and I want to get to all of them. So um, you sound like me, first of all, because I'm I'm the same way. Like, I do not like to be told what to do. And if I feel like deprived or like I can't, I'm just going to want to do it more. And so I think having that flexibility, like I do the same thing, like, like dairy and meat for me, like out of the question, I'm not going to do it. But like, if I go out to eat and there's oil, okay. Like, you know, like even when I'm, when I'm traveling, if it's vegan, like fine, I'm not gonna, um, yeah. And like the other night I had, um, an apple and peanut butter for dinner. Sweet. That's what I wanted. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But I think that that's like such a healthy way to approach it because it keeps you out of that all or nothing mindset and that perfectionism Mm -hmm. mindset. And that can really fuck you over. Like that can really be a catalyst for like, just saying, you know, throwing up your hands and saying like, screw it, I'm not going to do any of it. So I think that that's a really, like, really, really like pragmatic and healthy way to approach it. Um, And then the other thing that the, like the, the awareness that you have, I love it. Like, you know, you know, you, and you know what you need to do to support yourself. And you also are able to like kind of call out your BS a little bit with those thoughts that you're telling yourself of like, and, and, and realizing that like, okay, I'm feeling lower energy. Like, where's my mindset? Because like, I don't like so often people don't realize like 
the power of their thoughts and the stories that they're telling themselves and how that plays out in their life. Right. And I love that yeah. you're like, you you're onto yourself. I love it. Yeah. I mean, it's not, it's not always, I, 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 one thing that I've strived in my life is to self-reflection. So it's okay for me to fail as long as I take the time to reflect later on when I'm ready as to why it happened or what could have been done differently. So I have this big goal and have done for the last like year, which is to run more. And my thing was like, I want to run. I want to be running like three or four times a week. I want to run like a half marathon. Like I want this goal, but I've realized time and time again, that I cannot have such a large goal for myself, Mm -hmm. that it needs to be really small. And when I say small, I mean, like I tell myself, I want to run just once a week for 20 minutes. And Mm -hmm. I want to be able Mm -hmm. to do that for four weeks in a row. And it's, it's, a goal that is sounds so easy, but for me, it's so hard to stay on that track of so many anxiety thoughts prevent me from getting out and running yeah. just once a week. Yeah. Um, so that has been, that is like my long-term tiny, tiny goal of just like, okay, like I ran this morning, like I got out of the bed, I set the alarm, I got, it was raining and I was like, no, you're doing this, like you're going for that 20 minute run and that's your goal set for the week. Um, and whether I can do that for four weeks in a row is like, I want to set myself up and say, yes, you can, yes, you can. But yeah. it's, that's where the mental block comes in because, and I think you had mentioned this in one of your, um, one of the after hour sessions where yeah. you kind of say to yourself, well, I can't do it, but I'm going to set the goal anyways. Um, and so I, I'm fully aware of the fact that I've set my, I am setting myself up for that. And it's the same with eating. Like sometimes those old thought patterns come in of like, yeah. well, this is the way you're going to do it. But actually remember that you can't do it and you're most likely going to fail. And so you have mm-hmm. to really, at least I have to challenge myself. Yeah. Yeah, totally. And those, like, it's funny because those thought patterns, even when you're doing it, even, even years after you do it, it's like those thoughts will come up. Like we, thoughts come up still about drinking. Like, wouldn't that be nice if you could just have one, like, and, and I've been sober for like, you know, six years now, but it's like though, but I think that people get so tripped up on those thoughts that those thoughts actually come in, but it's actually like, I have this little trick where I just tack on something to the end of the thought. Like you probably won't be able to do this. Yeah, but you're going to try anyway. Right. And just sort of like a good idea, you know, just like a little boost at the end, just like a little boost at the end. And it's not like trying to change the thought. It's just sort of like acknowledging it and then offering another belief too. Cause like, yeah, I might not be able to sure, but let's just try. We're just going to try. Yeah. It's just this like very subtle way to be sneaky with it, right? It is. I love that so. idea. I think I'm going to try that because I know I, can, I I suffer from anxiety. And I, um, it has in my past been really, really bad anxiety. Mm-hmm. Mostly it's social anxiety. And I, mm-hmm. I have multiple coping mechanisms, some healthy, some not so healthy. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've done a lot of counseling. And so a lot of like one of the counselors had said to me, like, it's not going away. You need to learn how to be comfortable in the room with anxiety and give anxiety the space, but not have it be in your face. Like put it in a corner and be like, yeah, that's my little anxiety guy. It's going to sit there and that's okay. Um, But don't let it get really, really big. And I think that's sort of a similar thing of like Mm -hmm. saying, that's my thought process, but I'm also just going to add on a little friend to the end of that um, and make it more manageable and remind me that I don't have to follow the anxiety. I can just follow the friend. (laughs) I love it. And, And have room to like kind of have, yeah, exactly. Have that anxiety or have that, those, those thoughts kind of present and not letting it like yeah, not letting it be front and center, um, but giving it enough space so that you're not like, I don't know, resisting it because anything we resist, right. You get in trouble that, you know, so like, how can we have space for this while also like showing up for ourselves and doing what we know works for us? When I look back at photographs, I was not a chubby kid. I was not like, I wouldn't like, I was perfectly normal, healthy kid. Um, But I do have memories of being seven and an uncle on my dad's side, a Chinese uncle um, had mentioned something about my weight. And it it was enough that it's still, you know, like I'm 40 now 
Mm-hmm. So all these years later, this childhood memory is still so prominent for me as the catalyst for all of my issues with food and image. Um, and then I have an older brother who would also call me fat or like, he'd be like, you need to do this for me. or I'm going to call you the three letter word that I know you're going to make you cry. Mm-hmm. And it just became this thing for me. And when I look back at photo, cause I, you know, when I have these memories, I think, God, like why were my family so abusive about this? Like, mm-hmm. what did I have like a health problem? I got back the photographs. I'm like, no, like I was a perfectly mm-hmm. normal kid. Like there, there was no, there was, even if there was, something that needed to be held, like dealt with like if there was a weight issue and a doctor needed to be involved fine but the body shaming shouldn't have happened like I'm not going to excuse that ever yeah. um but it it just became part of my being was yeah. that I was that ugly kid and if I wanted a pack like a chocolate bar or something I should probably hide it mm-hmm. and not tell anybody that I've eaten it because they're gonna tell me that it's not good for me, that I shouldn't be eating it. And, Mm -hmm. you know, and I, 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 so I would, I would like binge eat junk food and hide all the wrappers Mm -hmm. from like a young age. Um, My mom was a yo-yo dieter. So. Oh, Oh, so that was modeled too. Cabbage, big pot, big pot of cabbage soup Mm -hmm. one week. And then the Atkins diet the next week. And the, you know, crazy exercising 80 Mm -hmm. style. And it was just, yeah and she was never happy with the way she looked she was always like and she was she wasn't uh somebody who needed really to be on a diet like she was Mm -hmm. a healthy weight she looked Mm -hmm. good and um but that was her her issues that she brought into the family Mm -hmm. dynamic um Mm -hmm. and passed on down to us and my my sister is naturally very thin my brother is naturally very thin and so I'd always saw myself as this black sheep who should Mm -hmm try and be like them but absolutely could not because I can't change mm. my my body type mm. this is the way I'm built and yeah yeah I I mean I can eat to be healthier for me and for my body to run yeah. at its optimum and if that means that it will naturally lose weight which I've been finding with this diet like I've been losing weight but it's not been a goal for me I have to try yep. really really hard to be like no like it's not a goal for me to lose weight I'm aware of how much weight I've lost but it's mm-hmm. not mm-hmm. at all a goal for me and I will not engage with a variety of conversations from friends who are like, Oh, you look so great. You're a friend. Mm-hmm. Nope. Not talking about that. Mm-hmm. I am feeling really good. Mm-hmm. My blood sugar, my blood pressure, like all oh, that is great. I've got energy, but I don't want to discuss my weight. Um, but yeah, my relationship with food has been from a really young age and mm-hmm. has been just have always seen myself as the ugly fat person. And that is, was my image my everything still struggle with that mm-hmm. on a regular basis like if my partner's like like you're so beautiful I'm like why are you like what do you want um like what is you know there's always I, I never I will never hear it and automatically be like oh thank you I guess I am like that's just yeah. not an ability I have yeah. because it's so ingrained inside of me yeah yeah. Isn't that so intriguing? Like how we can pick this stuff up when we're little and what's modeled to us, like what a huge impact that has on our life. Um, yeah, yeah seriously. So if you like, I'm just going to be curious if you were to like, like if you were able to tell that seven year old girl, something from your 40 year old, like, you know, set of eyes now, what would you tell her? That perhaps the adults in my life were not always right and that they Mm -hmm. had their own baggage that they were bringing in Mm -hmm. and it was not my baggage to carry it was placed upon me but it was not my it's not my baggage I don't need that Mm -hmm. baggage Mm -hmm. um I think that would probably be the big biggest message I think the biggest message for anybody dealing with any sort of abuse or trauma is that it's somebody else's baggage has been placed unfairly upon you and Mm -hmm. now you're carrying that baggage around gotta let it go when it's hard it's a lifelong yeah. struggle and it's a beautiful reminder so thank you for taking the time to to be vulnerable first of all and then sharing some of your some of your insights and some of your past and history and I think that it's going to be really I think people will need this reminder more people need this reminder so you kind of mentioned this before but are you surprised like that with the change of diet 
you could see those A1C numbers going down. Like if you, because it sounds with going into it, you really didn't know, right, about this. And you, it was through your research that you started doing this. Like, are you surprised that it was sort of this easy? Yes, absolutely was. Um, I also have a, a friend who is a nurse mm-hmm. and has probably been the only person in my life who I've mentioned this and has had a negative reaction from, which surprised me because I'm like, you're a nurse. But anyways, perhaps that is why, where I was like, share the story with you like hadn't seen her for like many many months like we had not had any contact for a long long time and so we finally met up and sort of the pandemic has sort of wound down a little bit and things were opening up it's like okay we'll go double backs let's go for a meeting and like sit down and eat food and I had said well I just need to make sure it's somewhere that has like some options for me so when you choose the restaurant, just give me a heads up. I want to have a look at the menu. And then when we met, she was like, so what's going on? And I was like, well, just so you know, like this diabetes. And she was like, oh no, that's terrible. Like, are you on medication? And I was like, I said, no, um, because I discovered it's reversible. And I was trying to like read her face and I couldn't. <laughs> and so I was like, so mom, I'm like on a whole food plant-based diet, which essentially means I'm vegan but I don't call myself vegan because I love wool and I knit <laughs> I'm, I was like I'm on a whole food plant-based diet <laughs> and I love like, wool and I knit I love it yeah because yes. I can't call myself a vegan <laughs> but um mm. so she was like well that's odd and I was like well no actually I did some research just like peer-reviewed studies like scientists are doing this like actual doctors mm. and there's like so much out there there's so much it's it's available if you look for it um it's reversible my a1c is 5.9 and she was like I feel like this is rare I feel like it's super super rare and you're like one of the only people and I'm like I feel like I'm not like it's a whole like there's a lot of people out there who've had like more success than I have who've had dangerous a1c levels and are springing it down I was like mine wasn't even that like mine was like 7.9 or something so it wasn't like I was like really scary diabetes like And she just was absolutely did not want to discuss the diet. I felt like it was not. And, you know, that people shouldn't be so scared to take medication and going on insulin isn't that big a deal and it's going to save my Mm -hmm. life. And I'm like, but I don't need it. Like I just went to the endocrinologist and he said, you don't need the insulin. We would like you to go down to at least five for some of the things and um, some of my future goals. Like we want you to be down to five so we can explore that. But otherwise, like you're doing amazing, super healthy blood pressure. And she just was like, like, this is not what I learned in school. Yeah. Yeah, really. I think, you know, it's, it's that belief system when we push up against, especially I think people in the medical field who this is what they've taught. I mean, they are taught that, that it's prescriptions, you know, that it's medication. And when we push up against that belief, even with like evidence, like, no, yo, for real, like this is happening to me. This is for real. (laughs) Like you can see my blood panel, right? It's such a contrast to what they were taught and what they believe. I think that it's just, it's, it's too much of a leap, you know, to like, it's almost like there needs to be some some steps in between, like, <laughs> um, yeah, but is because I see that a lot, you know, and it's incredible. Even when there's evidence, like, yes, insulin. Well, but if you don't need insulin, then exactly, you don't, yeah. you don't need it. So it's not even a point of conversation. <laughs> Yeah, it's, no. I, if if I was not, I had said to myself, it's been like three months, the numbers are not budging, they're getting worse, and absolutely, I'm going to enter mm-hmm. a conversation about what that looks like for me. I have zero yeah. problems with taking medication. I went on antidepressants and anti-anxiety meds, which, funnily enough, I'm not on anymore now that my health is so good. Like I have weaned, my, like I've been weaned off with my doctor. I'm on zero medication now. Wow, um, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, and learning that anxiety and depression and all that I was dealing with goes hand in hand with a lot of diabetes symptoms mm-hmm. um and like the insomnia and the sleep and everything but it, yeah it's just and understanding that other people have their own history emotional history with food and so like I know for her she's a very fussy eater and she's very like meat and potatoes and mm-hmm. I eat food a certain way and it, it's prepared mm-hmm. like that's her mindset and I'm like yeah. that's your baggage yeah. um but it it's kind of upsets me that she's in the medical field as a nurse, as somebody who's going to meet these people. And instead of offering, you know, that 
openness to an alternative mm-hmm. method has a very like rigid like no like you know like clinically you have to go on medication it's mm-hmm. just it's a little bit I mean because I've also struggled with my doctor too where mm-hmm. two years ago I sat in the office and was like bawling my eyes out and I'm like I'm so tired I think I have chronic fatigue like something is wrong mm-hmm. with me and was dismissed um and I've had a lot like and I know a lot of people who have had experience with their family doctors or, you know, other mm-hmm. doctors who are dismissive and don't follow through with diagnosing. And so it, it's frustrating for me that that mm-hmm. is what the medical field is like when it's so really the answer is so simple. Yeah. Not, I, I can't believe how simple it has been. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and and especially when we think about like how much faith and clout like people put on their doctor right like they're the doctor she's the nurse like they know like they for sure know like there's so much trust and just like blind faith that goes into that 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 people don't I think so many people don't understand the power that they have in the decisions that they make that can change things for them and yeah. they don't, and, and granted, there are some things, yes, that you need a doctor for. And there's like medical professionals are like needed. This is good. And I'm not discounting like Western medicine at all. Like it definitely has its place, but like it shouldn't have complete power over us. Right. Because I mean, like you said, you're like, okay, I'm going to try it for three months. If the numbers don't move, then I'll go into another conversation. And so, and what is the worst thing that could happen? So you eat more broccoli and pinto beans and like brown rice. Like, Oh, it's it's probably not going to be detrimental. (laughs) Like the worst case scenario, (laughs) but the, the little unexpected thing, the changes that can take place that you're like, Oh, I had no idea that this would like kind of improve. Right. Did you have any of those little things that came up for you? Yeah. Well, I have, um, IBS. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it's sort of been this lifelong struggle with my digestive system and like trying to figure that out and what I can and cannot eat. And, um, again, also like refusing to do any sort of like panels because I'm like, no, I don't want a test that tells me I can't eat like a million things because I'm going to die. Um, like (laughs) I cannot live like this. Whereas like, no, you can't eat broccoli and you can't eat black beans, but you can eat pinto beans, but you can eat jasmine, but not basmati. I'm like, no, I can't. Yeah. You can't yeah. have a restrictive list. Yes. Um, yes. And many years ago, my doctor was like, you need to take more fiber, like use a fiber supplement. I was like, okay, I'd like to have a bunch of x-rays done. Um, so my digestive system doesn't work very well. And like, I was having a lot of like issues like diarrhea and stuff like that, um, that would flare up and down fairly regularly. Mm-hmm. Um, and so with the whole food plant-based diet, because I jumped right in and, you know, I guess I probably shouldn't have jumped right in, but I'm not sure I would have been successful if I had, if I did not know it, knowing me, mm-hmm. like I needed to go a hundred percent. I can't do the 50 slowly mm-hmm. adding mm-hmm. more. Um, just like me. Yeah. I'm just like that. Yeah. Too. After a little while, my body, like initially my body reacted to it. I had severe, severe, severe cramps. I was very sick. Um, and was like, oh crap, like perhaps I can't eat this way and maybe I'm allergic to legumes and I'm allergic to like all, all these whole food, like I have a I have a thing and I went on Google and I was like, no, you can't read Google, like it's just gonna get worse. <laughs> um because I'm gonna be like all um and so and I knew I couldn't go see my doctor because my doctor's not at all helpful. So yeah. um somebody actually in one of the Facebook groups had recommended some reading for me. So I, I had a source then that I could go and read to her and I was like, okay, um, I guess that there were certain ways that the beans could be cooked that help it. Um, there's digestive enzymes. So I took, took some, got some digestive enzymes and a probiotic. Um, and I took my, the Metamucil, uh, mm-hmm. the fiber, cause I felt like, like I was needing the, the fiber to sort of, I don't know, I don't know what the medical term is, but I, I, I felt like I needed it. And from my conversations with my doctor previously knew that that was something that was important, even though I was getting a lot of dietary fiber. Mm-hmm. Um, like I believe the Metamucil is a different form of fiber and, mm-hmm. and so it does something different in your body. Um, so now, I, and so it just took, it took about a month for me to sort of settle it. Yeah. Um, And I figured like I couldn't eat a huge amount of raw vegetables like broccoli and stuff had to be lightly steamed. Mm -hmm. Um, 
I mm-hmm. didn't buy dry beans anymore. I've been buying canned beans, mm-hmm. um, which seems to be more digestible because mm-hmm. um, there's something in them, I guess. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it's called, but there's something in there um, that can cause digestive upsets. So um, I was a little bit worried at the beginning that this was like, I'm not going to be able to do this. Like, I'm feeling so good on it, but how could something that makes me feel so good now make me so sick? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And there's so much misinformation about food and diet out there that it's in- almost impossible to find out answers yeah um because yeah. you know one person is going to say to you like it's eat the whole food plant-based diet another person's going to say no like you need some chicken in there um, like don't eat beans they're horrible yeah, don't like there's beans. yeah it's coming from every yeah. direction yeah. you need more protein but there's protein in everything i eat i'm so mm-hmm. confused mm-hmm. um so mm-hmm. it's it's definitely a really difficult waters to navigate in the sense of understanding how to eat properly Mm -hmm. and how to eat properly for your body is Mm -hmm. really for me like there's just been moments where I'm like it's too hard Mm -hmm. where like clean food dirty girl for me was is what is getting me through got me through everything and Mm. is making my life easier because it's like here's the meal plans here are the grocery lists here's you know the substitutions if you need them and there's a community out there where you can ask questions um and it sort of helps to sort of take away all that overwhelming noise Mm -hmm. and confusion and just Mm -hmm. sort of be like just focus on this and if you have things come up then you can slowly explore that but it doesn't have to be like try and understand everything all at once. Yeah. Yeah. So how long did it take then for your like digestive, like the cramps and like your body kind of adjusting to this new way of eating for you? I would say August, like, so what, mid-March to at least the beginning of August, August Mm -hmm. has probably felt the most stable for me Mm -hmm. with regards to knowing exactly what to avoid and what to not avoid and mm-hmm. knowing that while I'm okay having a little bit of oil, I'm not okay having like really greasy fried foods. It's yeah. Yeah. Something that's yeah. Me back and just being okay with that. I can't guarantee like there's not going to be a day where like, I really want that and I'm going to have it <laughs> and then I'll regret it later. But <laughs> I do have the knowledge that I probably should not be eating the fried but foods. The calculated <laughs> like risk. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so how is your IBS responding to all of this? currently it's been doing really well so all my flare-ups are for august have been zero Mm -hmm. um i would have said july i probably had like maybe two Mm flare-ups june was was really really rough um i think that was sort of where the the eating the whole food plant base sort of had accumulated in my stomach and like my digestive system was just like holding on to to everything and just been like just angry Mm -hmm. um so interesting yeah body's so interesting yeah, and and I know if I don't like I'm with my running, my exercising. I have a very 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 active job. Like I I don't stop moving. Um, when I work with kids. So yeah, yeah. I'm always active, but I find if I don't go for the run, I'm not moving my body in that way. Um, my digestive system can be a bit slower. Mm-hmm. Um, so I find that if I'm exercising a couple of times a week, then my digestive system tends to flow and sort of responds to food better. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I think it's, I think it, people don't realize that when they make this switch, especially if they're coming off from like more of a, um, what would be the equivalent of the standard American diet, right? Like a lot of more processed food and meat heavy foods and, and dairy, like there is a transition period, you know, and the, the more like processed and like saturated fat kind of foods that you're coming from, like the more there will like that adjustment period will be really intense that I think it's, yeah. it's kind of, you, you expect like, okay, I'm going to be eating really healthy. I should be feeling really good. And oftentimes people will not feel good, especially for the first couple of weeks, like, um, because they're detoxing, right. And people yeah. don't account for that. And so there can be like a lot of headaches and there can be, um, like nausea even, and there can be a lot of, just fatigue and like digestive stuff because your, you know, your whole gut is not, 
is not used to having all of that different fiber and different types of fiber. And so it does take a minute for the body to adjust. And I think that that's a really good reminder for people. Like if you're just starting this out and you're feeling, and you're eating a really like wide range of whole plant foods and you're taking your B12 and you're kind of going at this from a way that's, that's, um, thoughtful and you're not feeling good, like your body will, will very likely adjust. Like I see this all the time. Yeah. 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 And if, and if, yeah, like I, I think it would be easy to, to have these reactions and then fall off the healthy based diet. And then, then you have to detox again because Mm -hmm. you've stopped eating that way. And I think that was my fear was that if I stopped Mm -hmm. eating, the way I was now eating that I would go back. And then I was like, I don't know if I want to like, I can't because I have to jump in a hundred percent. Like I yeah. know I do. Yeah. I can't do that. I fall off the wagon and then I'm going to slowly gradually transition back into a whole food diet. Like I can't, I can't do that. Mm-hmm. Um, I won't, I don't have, I don't have the stamina and the like motivation mm-hmm. to keep doing it. I need to be like, this is the way I'm eating. Yeah. Um, so I think, perhaps that is what also helped me to stay with, even though I was in like a lot of pain. Um, And like, I stopped eating for a couple of days because it's like, I can't eat. Like when I eat, it hurts so much. Mm. I'm I'm just going to not eat for a few days and we'll (laughs) switch. Hopefully this goes away. Um, Mm -hmm. You had mentioned too, a little while ago about like uh, foods being like restrictive. Right. And it's interesting because when I bring up, and I don't, I don't know if you've had this experience, but when I bring up to people how I eat, like people who don't know me, um, one of the, and, and if they don't eat this way, one of the th- the questions I'll get is like, well, don't like, don't you feel like you just don't have a lot of options to choose from? Like it must feel so restrictive because you don't eat all that stuff. And my answer is like, wait a minute. Like I have so many more options now than I did before. Cause there's so many different types of foods out there. Right. And so when you're talking about like different kinds of beans and different kinds of veggies and like steaming the veggies, maybe instead of eating them raw, like there is so much room for all of that because of the amount of whole plant foods there are out there. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, and, and with like my previous way of eating, like my partner and I were talking about this where we have you become so comfortable with what you eat. You buy the same things every week. You binge eat on the same foods every week. You eat out at the exact same restaurants and you probably choose the exact same meal every week. Uh, Like you have a pattern because you've established a pattern of eating and you have your comfort places. Like, oh, what are we going to order? Well, same thing we order every time. Mm -hmm. Um, But now because... I have such a varied diet and a, and a different diet that does have some requirements. It means thinking outside of the box. It's like yeah. you're going to read the labels of the, the chips. You're going to like, you're going to question the restaurant and the way they're preparing the foods. And mm-hmm. you're going to ask questions and have an awareness of what options are available to you. Um, so you actually have more options than you did before, even though before perhaps you did have more options, but you were had that. Like, you didn't use them. Like, no, like I'm getting yeah. that seafood fettuccine, like that. <laughs> yeah. Know? Like that's all I got. Yeah. It's so true. And I think most people, like I read this somewhere, most people have like the same, like six recipes that they rotate, you know? And, and I mean, that's why like our meal plan- plans are bomb because every week is something new and exciting. You don't know what <laughs> yeah. you're going to get. And it's like so varied. Um, and like that food rut is real. And most people who don't eat this way, you're right. I mean, it is like the same things over and over again. Um, and with this, it's like, yeah, the possibilities are really endless. I love how you, uh, before you go out to eat, you look at the menu and you look at your options. That is something that I do. And I found that very helpful. Like if it's a restaurant I haven't been to like, okay, I'm going to really see what's possible here so that when I go there, I can go in with confidence, kind of knowing what I'm eating. Cause I also don't like to be like, I don't, I don't like a lot of attention on myself and I don't like to be fussed over. And so when people know I eat this way, it's like, okay, well, can you have something? What are you going to eat? Is it okay? And I don't want to like sit there for you know 10 minutes asking the server like questions. <laughs> yeah. And so I'm like, I always like prepare in advance. <laughs> yeah. And that has been very helpful. So I love that. Yeah. You do that. <laughs> yeah. That's my, uh, that's my, uh, 
social anxiety coping yeah. mechanism yeah. is being prepared and, and knowing mm. like if I have questions like can I email them beforehand is it possible to give them yeah. a call before I go yeah. just so that I don't have to have that added anxiety pressure because if I do then I'm likely to just be like oh that's okay I'll just I'll just get the you know right the dairy, whatever that's fine but know that my body is going to struggle yeah later with that. yeah um, I love but it but just for the sake of like making things easy for everybody be like no whatever I'll, I'll have that like mm-hmm. but that's not really my my true choice right so, yeah. like separation stepping out of integrity <laughs> because like of the pressure yeah so preparation yeah. is key and and that's beautiful because this way of eating like you have to be prepared because you can't get it through you know yeah, it's, it's not con- it's not all that convenient well it is and it's not like there's not anything much more convenient than like eating a piece of fruit when we need a snack <laughs> but yeah. like we can't live on fruit alone right and so it it does take, it does take preparation. And I think that that extends into other areas, like being prepared when you go out to eat, for example. Um, so I love it. How is your, has your partner been eating this way? Is she, has she been kind of like eating some of the same things you've been eating or how is her, how is she doing with all this? She has been incredible. Is my first like absolutely supportive, amazing. I'm not sure it would have been such an easy journey without having a supportive person by my side. It's been, you know, there's definitely been some like, do we have to go to one grocery store or two grocery stores today? And I'll be like, I have to go to three. You <laughs> <laughs> can't find the vegan Worcestershire sauce anywhere. <laughs> I need that ume pan vinegar, yeah. damn it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so other than like the hours and hours that we sometimes spend grocery shopping, everything. <laughs> Is yeah. means fine. I'm have always been the cooks. I, I I enjoy cooking. Um, she does not as much. She can if she has to, but would mm-hmm. rather not. Um, so it just made sense that whatever I cook, she eats, and she's not fussy in that way. Um, but she has been feeling better, and you know, she had said like for her and for me too, this way of eating morally and ethically aligns with our belief system yeah. and who we are as people, and so yeah. it was just it was a nice way of being able to sort of put all of those things together. Like we feel like better people because we are not contributing to the climate change in the way that we were, or that we are not affecting the animals in the way that we were. Mm -hmm. Um, And we're making Mm -hmm. conscious decisions about what brands of food we choose. And it just, it makes us feel better um, as people. She's a landscaper. And so um, she would find often that naturally her body is aching and she'd get like some really bad pains in her hands, especially if she's using a lot of the heavier equipment Mm -hmm. um, where she was getting numbness and waking up in the middle of the night with pain and like aches. And she said that since changing the diet, she has not been getting those pains. Like it's not affecting her, like her inflammation and all of those like aches and pains, like a little bit was normal for that sort of, work but nothing like she was experiencing before and just like more energy and just feeling healthier and like if anybody just assemble upon this video who <laughs> happens to be kind of where you were um back in March like is there anything that you would want to like tell them or any advice you want to give them or any words of encouragement I think maybe don't be scared to fail failure mm. is where we learn and grow that is like I do a lot of um, training educators at work and I, I do a lot of mentorship. Um, and that is always my biggest takeaway for them. It's like, it's okay to fail. If you're failing, you're growing, you're learning, you're thriving. If you are not failing, either you have given up or you are so scared to try that you are not learning anything. Like there's yeah. no room for growth unless you fail. And so like, yeah. if you fail because something like you fail, then that's okay. But you can't set yourself up to fail. It's sort of like a, a place I'm at trying to figure out right now of like allowing myself to fail, but not setting myself up to fail. It's like a right. tricky thing. Yes. Um, Where it's like failing while moving forward. Like yeah. not allowing that, that those mistakes and those fails to like, just to have you say fuck it and like peace out on all of it and it's like how can we fail and make mistakes and use those to propel us forward instead of use those to beat ourselves up it's almost like how do we love ourselves through that and and I think that's the key too like I think that when we fail and when we make a mistake if we can love instead of judge like we'll keep going forward and I think there's there's something to that yeah 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 it's like finding that place where you're gonna finding that that key of what did you learn from that failure not 
not what did you do wrong and now right. you suck, but more like right. what did you learn? And or like how was that actually perfect through. for you? And it might be yeah. perfect for you because you did learn that thing that you wouldn't have learned otherwise, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's true. Yeah, I, I, it's it's like it's kind of heady, but I I love it. I think that that's fantastic advice. I think that everybody can benefit from it. So thank you for that. Again, there's so many like just there's so many nuggets in this. It's so juicy. I just love it. And um, tell your partner I said hello, and I hope to see I you in office do. hours soon. And um, I just want to hear all the updates and like, and I know that you can get your numbers to where you want them to be. Like, I know you can. So I'm rooting you on. I think you're awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking your time to like chat with me. And it's been great. It's nice to like meet you, meet you. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Same here. Thank you so much. And we'll, we'll be in touch soon. Okay. Thanks. Bye, Andrea. Bye.